I'm just starting to finish work on the V-bottom skiff. Now the first thing for me to do is plug the holes and uh, I just want to scrape some of that hanging grain out of the way so I'm going to do that quick like. You have to use a pretty flat bladed scraper otherwise you could dig the hole up a little bit. This one just glides right over the hole and rips off that extra grain. Another thing about scraping this off is as opposed to sanding, you know, I can scrape that off and no worries about altering the shape of the top of the hole. But with sandpaper, you know, I'm not convinced that you wouldn't kind of taper it at the edge of the hole and uh, that, would, that wouldn't be good. So, you know, I just scrape it off real quick. But it's hardwood too, so that's easier to get away with right here than it would be if you had some kind of softwood or something like that. Now scraping it first also makes it so that it blows out a little bit easier and, uh, you know, it doesn't have that hanging grain all the way around it or on any corner. It just does a lot of different things. You know, it does that, it stops the uh, glue line around the plug from being a little dark on one side where that is because the plug will drag that down into the hole. Right here on the cap, uh, the plane has grabbed the grain just a tiny little bit and uh, I didn't want to take it back too far with the plane because it could happen again. So I'm going to have to sand it right there, but uh, you know, it'll look good. It'll get rid of all of that without any problem at all. It's amazing how fast it goes away, really. Right here I'm using a block, actually, under the paper. And that's not even sandpaper. That's one of those screen pads that uh, you use for a random auger sander. I just wrap it around a block and it works as good as anything. Well, I've done a little bit of sanding, but uh, I've only done this on the other side and this side. You know, I've done the outboard edge of the cap or the covering board, and uh, I've done the top, really, of the guard all in one sweep there because the paper was touching both as I sanded it. And so I'll have to come back later and break these edges because a real keen edge won't hold varnish very good. So I'll come back and do that, but I'm trying to do it in some sort of order because otherwise I'll forget exactly where I'm at and what kind of paper I'm using, you know, what weight. So, you know, I'll get it all done once and then switch paper and do it all in order again. Now we're gonna make these plugs out of the scraps that we cut off of the covering board. So it's the same wood, you know, and uh, that's what I want because I want the color to match you can't always match the grain exactly, but the color will match when we go to finish it. So that's important to me. You know, I, I've never seen anything worse than like oak with mahogany plugs in it or something like that. It just, you know, this is the right thing to do. And uh, I, I like cutting them myself. I cut the cutters on this plug cutter a little bit more aggressive so that it would cut a little faster because, you know, the way I buy the tool, I, I can't get it to cut as fast as I'd like it to cut. So I alter that. And then, you know, there's all kinds of stuff I've learned over the years about cutting plugs, you know. I mean, you cut them for years, but, man, I, it just seems like there's so much to learn about it. You know, one of the things is I've got a kind of a broad piece right here, and I'm sliding it along a fence. I like doing that because it makes it easier for taping it afterwards. And, uh, you know, maybe some of these things might look like they're taking up a ton of time, but it just saves you time in the end. That's what it does, to, you know, by being organized. I don't even drill two rows at a time. I drill one row at a time and then I cut them off and I drill another row. And uh, it just makes it easier for me. Some people like superimpose the whole thing. I'm not worried about getting the most out of it. I just want them to come out right. Now here you see me scraping at them after I've drilled it because you know there's a bunch of hanging grain all over the top of it. You can use a scraper if you're careful and maybe it's best to use sandpaper but you know, I use both. Either one's within reach, I'm going to get away with it. Now I'm going to cut that row of plugs right off of the bandsaw. And I'm kind of using my thumb as a little fence right there, but it doesn't have to be perfectly straight, but I don't want it to be real wide. What I want it to do is be just nice and neat so that it makes it easier for me to tape it. Now that I've put the piece of tape on there, I'm actually rubbing it up and down because I want to see the impressions of the uh, plug cutter because I know it's stuck to that piece and I've cleaned all the ends of those off so it, you know it's got adhesion all the way around. We'll see how it works when I when I cut them off and take them out. You have to be kind of accurate here. Maybe it's a little bit of guesswork. You're trying to get them to be as long as you can get them but uh, you know if you don't cut it close enough then you have to come back and do something about that so you know it, it, it gets to be kind of figured out a little bit as you get going along and you know right where to cut and uh, you know all the plugs 
a severed from the piece that you're cutting it off of and stuck to the tape. Once I've made that cut, I get to pull the tape. This is always fun pulling the tape because, you know, it works so good. I love to hear them and they pop up out of the hole like that. They disappear out of nowhere. So those are the plugs that we're going to be using to plug the cap, right? They're three-eighths of an inch plugs, you know, white oak, same material as the cap. You know, I need a hundred to do the bolt, so, you know, it's going to happen a number of times. But I'll do it basically a little different in order. You know, I'll do all the drilling first, and then all the tape, and then all the sanding, and all that. So, you know, I don't have to keep switching hats and going back and forth and back and forth. Before I pull the tape and pull all the plugs out of there, I'm going to make a little tiny dot right in line right here with the grain because sometimes in a darker room it's kind of hard to tell which way the grain is and it's confusing because the bandsaw cuts are across so it's like you can get them 90 degrees off really easy so this saves you from that right there well check that out i got almost every one of them right on there so you know it works out pretty good so now i'm going to lay it down like that and then i can pull them off individually if i want or I can just pull them all off and put them in a container. I don't want to make it difficult for myself, so I'm pretty uh, careful on exactly where I cut them off and stuff like that. You know, I don't mind checking it as I go. I'll push it down there, clip off a piece, and see how I was doing. You know, if I need to cut it a little deeper, I will. You know, if I cut it a little slack, that's okay because I can scrub it with the same bandsaw. You know, just like going back and forth until I see that circle appear perfectly. If it doesn't, then when I go to pull the tape, I'll leave that plug behind. I'm going to get these in the bucket and keep going. You know, I, I did about 20 in a row, so I've got five more to do. And then we'll have all the plugs that we need. We're going to mix up some Total Boat High Performance 2 to 1 epoxy. It's going to be uh, just a small amount because that's all we need to, to plug holes, a very small amount. So we have to be very careful about mixing it. This is 2 to 1 right here. And uh, it is pretty much a standard in, uh, in epoxy glue right here. I use a little acid brush to coat the inside of the holes because I want it to be covered all the way around. So, you know, I, I spread it on there and then I go back to them and sop up some of it and move it to the other holes back and forth. And, uh, you know, the idea is to get it covered. I've got myself set up on the bench just the way I want. I've got the plugs on the other side of a piece of quarter inch material there, a rod. And uh, it makes it easy because I'm a little shaky and I can set down the pliers on the rod and grab the height of the plug just right every time with no problem at all. And then I dip it in the glue on top of this cut off cup and then I bring it over to the boat and uh, line it up really easily. I got plenty of time to line it up so I get a good look at it and then uh, drive it in. Yeah, I didn't make this trick up. I learned it from somebody else and uh, you know, it is the way to go. And the little line on there, the little dot, it makes it so that I can line it up with the grain really quickly. I don't have to guess or look at it or pick it up with my hands and rotate it around trying to figure out which way is which. That's all done. It seems like these little steps might be a little bit much, but you've got quite a few of them to do. I think anybody could enjoy doing this, especially at the end of a project like this. You know, and uh, I feel sorry for people that don't have a couple hundred holes to plug, really. So we're going to knock these plugs into place, and we're not going to bang on them too hard because it kind of squashes them a little bit. You know, and it's got a hydraulic pressure under the plugs that you have to kind of wait a little bit. You hammer them in place, down a little bit, then you come back and tap them some more. And you can feel them move again really, really easy just with light taps because the hydraulic pressure has been released off into the wood and uh, now you can drive them all the way home. You can see when I drive the plugs that there's no hanging grain alongside the hole. And like I said, it makes it real easy to wipe off. And, uh, you know, the whole process really happens so quickly. Uh, it's impossible to do this by hand anywhere near this fast. This system with the pliers is just the way to go because if I tried to do it by hand, it's just almost impossible. It's just messy. It takes too much time. There's no competition for this. You have to wipe around that plug because if you don't, you have a puddle of epoxy that dries. And not only do you have to clip a plug off, you have to clip off the epoxy too. And believe me, it makes it two or three times harder. I'm onto the port side. 
And I learned something with this brush about priming the holes. I've got the bristles cut really short, but you know, to get it down in the hole, you just kind of lay it alongside the hole and fold it over into the hole. Well, these are the last plugs, you know, and I'm happy about that. It's kind of an accomplishment. It makes you feel good when you look at it, even before you clip them off. Now, let me show you how to clip these plugs off. In the first place, you want to clip them off high to start, you know, and, uh, you know, there's no glue around the bottom edges of it or, or burrs hanging up there or anything. Like I said, it's easy to clip them like this. You clip them off with the heel of your chisel hard against the wood. That means that the cutting edge is up a little high. You use a little momentum, you push right through it, but you're cutting it off high. It gets it so that you can take a look at the grain and see if it's going uphill or downhill. Sometimes you have to reverse direction or you're going to clip it underneath. You know, most of these just went in one direction and, you know, that's nice, but uh, it doesn't always work exactly that way. So, you know, as you get clipping, you move your handle up and up and up and the cutting edge get closer and closer and closer to the surface and you're just clipping them off closer and closer. If you can't get them exactly down perfect, you can scrape them if you want and sand them if you want, but uh, sometimes it, it doesn't hurt to put a little touch up at the very end where you just kind of slice them off sideways and get a little closer. After a little bit, you get into a rhythm really doing this where, uh, you know, you, you can't imagine how fast they go one right after another. You can do a hundred of them in no time flat, really. Much faster than putting them in, really. Well, most of these plugs just take a couple of strokes. One high, maybe one low, and a little tiny touch-up. So, we're rolling along pretty nicely here, getting the job done. Now I'm running a scraper over the top of the plugs, really. It's just to get that very last little hump off them before I start sanding. And then I take a random orbital sander, and it's got kind of a rough grit on it, and uh, go over it with that really quick. You know, that makes it look perfect, but uh, I got a couple more weights of paper down from that, you know, in order to finish it up really nice. Well, that's what it looks like right there. Scrape down and sand it off, and uh, you know, it's nice and smooth, feels great. We got a number of more plugs to clip off here, you know, up forward and all the way down the other side, but it doesn't take very long. We're just waiting for the glue to dry. So look what we got going on in the other room here. Now, <laughs> we've taken the walls down here and we're going to take some more down, but uh, these are the two timbers for Orca to make the keel right here. I'm going to join one to the other. This one here is going to be behind that one. and. Uh, the stern post will be in that one, and then the forefoot will get connected to the front of this big long one right here. So, you know, we're getting started on it. I've done a lot of work, really, you know, uh, investigating and measuring and thinking about the structure and just about everything you could do. And uh, I have to tell you that when I was a little boy and I used to sleep on the back porch in Jamestown near Dutch Harbor in the middle of the night, we're talking about the 50s here the 1950s. We used to hear these Nova Scotian boats coming down the bay at night with these make or break engines and they were fantastic, you know. They would go pop, 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 pop and then skip, you know, and they go pop, 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 pop. Everybody knows what make or break engines was back then. We don't, people don't know about them anymore today, but you'd hear them at night because night was calm. You know, everything was calm and serene, and then you'd hear that above everything. So, you know, it's something I've had to do with for quite some time and studied since the 50s about these boats. So, you know, here's the first one I'm going to get to build right here. 